Hey guys, just look at this car. This looks amazing, right? And this car has got independent suspension. But is that any good on the trails? Let's find out. So guys, this awesome looking RC car is the Element RC Night Runner, and this car is truly amazing. It is very capable, it's got independent front suspension, and overall this car is just very very nice. I know this car is on the market already for quite a while now, but I still wanted to do a review about this car, because this thing is just awesome in my opinion. So yeah, I had a bit of a bad start about this car, you know, normally I buy all of my cars brand new, but this time I saw an advertisement of it second hand, and yeah, it wasn't unfortunately what the seller told me so that was a bit of a downside but yeah that's in the past now and now we are just going to do the review like we are normally do so let's have a closer look at the transmitter first this is the transmitter and it runs on three triple A's which you need to supply of your own. So it's a bit bulky in my opinion and it feels a bit plasticky but it is what it is. A thing what I really do like about this one that we have got three channels. So the third channel is currently not in use but you can use this for example if you want to install a winch or something so that's a thumbs up for me. So over here we've, you've got your basic settings so your steering trim, throttle trim etc. And this is your on off switch and that's all to say about it. Here is the car guys, what do you think of the appearance? Well I really do like the tough looking pickup style that Element have created. So appearance wise, this car is a thumbs up for me. And this car already comes with a lot of trim mounted on there. So we've got some wipers, we've got door handles, uh, we've got mirrors already installed. Even an exhaust sitting right over there, so that's a thumbs up. So here in the front you can see a very nice looking front bumper with some LEDs mounted inside there. We've got an opening for a winch if you would like to install a winch, so that's a thumbs up. And look at the front bumper guys and do you see the element bed sitting right over there so that really looks amazing so when we look at the rear of the car you can see the accessory rack right over there so normally the accessory rack is risen a little bit but i just mounted it like this so we won't see the big hole so over here you can see the rear bumper with some options to uh, mount a tow hook so that's all fine so let's look underneath the body Underneath the body you will find a very clean and a very professional setup. So let's start with the electronics. So this is your Reedy ESC and this is ATMs. And what I really do like about this ESC that it comes with two plugs for connecting light. So this is the motor and this is a 540 motor but this one is special. And that's because this one is a 5 slot motor. So normally the ready to run cars will come with a 3 slot motor. But a 5 slot motor will give you a much smoother modulation than a standard 3 slot. So that's a thumbs up. Over here is your receiver box and this is... A three channel receiver with two auxiliary ports for connecting some lights. This is your uh, steering servo, and I think it's a 15 kilogram steering servo. And we've got the metal servo horn already installed on there. So the electronics of this car is very good. Another very good thing about this car is how the motor is positioned. So when we look from the side you can see that the motor is very down low in the chassis and therefore the center of gravity is also very low and it helps with the performance of the car. So this car has got ball bearings throughout and we've got a lot of metal parts. So we've got the metal motor plate sitting right over there. We've got metal chassis rails, we've got metal parts sitting right over there, we've got there some metal parts and when we turn the car around you can see the metal linkages which is a four link setup in the rear. So the Shocks are oil shocks of course and also with the aluminium bodies which are fully adjustable and that's also a good thing. So here in the front you can see the magic and this is the IFS or the independent front suspension and I really like that. So I'm looking forward to test this one on the course and to see how this performs. So let me throw in some batteries first and show you when the car is powered on. The car is powered on and this is the steering servo. So the steering servo isn't the fastest in the world, but it's got plenty of power. So that's all fine. And now here is the modulation. Do you see that? I really like the low modulation of this car. So that's pretty awesome. So there's only one thing left to do now and that's take it outside for a spin. 
So guys, we're at the first obstacle and the first test that we're going to do is this very steep incline onto the boulder right over there. So let's see how this car performs. And I've got very high hopes for this car. So let's see how if it can get up there. And so far no problem at all, do you see that? Oh, now it's struggling a bit. So uh, you've got like a little dent over there. Yes, here it goes, on to the next obstacle. Here is the next obstacle that we are going to do. So it first should go all the way up this big boulder. And when we are on there, then you have to go over this bridge. And that can be a bit tricky because of the spacing of the steps. So let's see if we can manage to get up there. Do you see it already? It's struggling a bit, but let's give it more power. So here it goes. It did it, so on to the next obstacle. Here is the next obstacle that we are going to do. And this can be a bit tricky, so we've got a very big loose boulder sitting right over here. So when your car doesn't have port or axles or a lot of ground clearance, this is a very tricky obstacle. But let's see how this car with the independent front suspension performs. Yeah, I'm not sure if we are going to make it all the way, but let's find out. So you've got a very big boulder in the center, do you see that? So the rear wheel is on there and, well surprisingly, it's on the other side. Wow! Here is not a very interesting incline, so we've got a ditch coming up and when your back wheels are in there then it's pretty difficult to get up there. So let's see if this car can make it. There, do you see that? So the, one of the rear wheels is inside this ditch. And that's always the difficult part of this obstacle. But let's see if we can save it. And yes, we can. Wow, this car is surprisingly good. I didn't expect this. This is one of the most difficult obstacles on my test course. So almost no RC car is able to get up here. But let's give it a try anyway. So yeah, it's a bit difficult for you to see, but you've got like a very big gap over here. And a lot of dirt, and the dirt makes the tires very slippery. So getting up here is almost impossible. But I had a few RC cars that were able to get up here, but yeah, I can't recall which one they were. But yeah, this is so difficult. But let's give it one more shot, otherwise we will go to the next obstacle. No, maybe... On here first, now the other way, now do you see? It's not going to do this one. So Here is another interesting obstacle that we are going to do. So this is the first part and the second part is the head. So this is the high altitude turn. So if your car doesn't have a very good turning circle, then this is a very difficult one. So let's see how the night runner performs. Here we go, we are on the bridge. So let's clear this one and then we are going to the head. Oh, it's struggling a little bit, did you see that? But it made it so far, so let's go to the head. As mentioned in the first part of the video, this transmitter is not capable of one and driving. So therefore the camera is on a bit of an awkward uh, position, but uh, hopefully you can see everything clearly here. So let's see how this car performs. So all the way in currently, and now I have to back up once, otherwise I can't make this turn. But what I really do like about this car is the sound of the gearbox. So it's a very nice uh, sound that's coming out of there. So I really like that. I have to back up again, otherwise my front wheels will not go onto the very narrow beams. Yeah, but so far this car is pretty surprisingly good and I really like it. So let me give you some driving footage and then I will come back to you with my final thoughts about this car. <laughs>
So guys, that was the driving with the Element RC, the Night Runner. And what do I think of this car? Well, we had a bad start, but it's not the car to blame. It's all about the seller. So that's in the past now. So let's have a closer look at the car. So what do I think of it? Well, I really do like this car. It's very capable. It's pretty, you know, it's very handsome in my opinion. And the electronics inside there is very good. So this is a five slot motor instead of a three slot. So that's a thumbs up. You know, the receiver did a good job. The ESC did a very nice job. So there's one big downside of this car and that's the transmitter so it's not capable when i'm driving and i really hate it another thing what maybe is a bit annoying you don't have got a lot of ground clearance and that's all got to do by the independent front suspension and the solid rear axle but you know when you buy this car you know that already you just buy this car because this is like an uh, yeah realistic setup and therefore you will choose for this car so yeah i don't think that's a big downside another thing that maybe can be improved are the tires so the tires are a bit too stiff in my opinion i would like to have seen that these are a little bit softer but it is what it is but the overall package you know you will pay around 450 bucks or something for this car and i think that this is a pretty good car for the money all right guys that was it today thank you for watching please subscribe to my channel if you got any questions or suggestions leave a comment below and i will see you in the next video Bye bye